Hi, it's Pip Mackay here and it is day 10 of my 40 day quest to write my book. Um, and yeah, today I'm still in the part of the hero's journey that we talk about, which is called the road of trials. And one of the things that I was looking at today and one of the things that I understand about being successful is to not really worry too much about what other people think, that it's important to listen to other people's opinions of what you're doing in your work, particularly if you're talking to an audience, but really in the end you just got to let it go and be yourself and go for it. And if people like you, then they're a part of your tribe, and if they don't like you, well, then it's a good filter system to filter out those people who aren't meant to be with you because you just can't be with everyone and you can't please everyone either. And it was really interesting because uh, just uh, on the last blog, um, I had two of, or the or it might have been the blog before, I had uh, two responses to exactly the same blog that were completely the opposite. So one response was, you know, Pip, I, I, you know, are you procrastinating? What part of the hero's journey is that? And the other response was, Pip, I think you're working too hard. You know, you need to take a break. So it was interesting to see completely opposite opinions of the same thing. And this is why you can't really take other people's opinions too seriously. But it's good to listen to them because what I realized was with the first one, um, are you procrastinating? I thought, gosh, how do they think that? Because in my world, I'm not doing any procrastination at all. Like now I've written over 20,000 words in 10 days. I've, um, you know, been doing a video blog and writing a blog. So it takes me about an hour to write a video blog and write a blog. It takes me about two to three hours to write 2,000 words for my book. Um, then, of course, like yesterday, I did four hours of coaching. Um, obviously, I'm organizing my staff, new PA, organizing my VA, looking at the new systems that we're doing in Office Autopilot. I uh, got quotes to get um, the room next door painted um, and it just goes on and on and on. So I feel like I've been hugely productive even if sometimes I haven't felt like it or even like yesterday I was feeling a bit bored. But what I realized that the boredom I felt yesterday was just actually fatigue and needing to have a break and since I've made my quota of words that I'd written, um, I'd over overachieved in my quota for the last few days so then yesterday I could take a bit of a break and that was really good because my eyes were hurting and had a bit of an allergic reaction to the paint. Um, so yeah so it was just really interesting to hear that person's response but what I realized was that um, it was still a really good piece of feedback because I realized that maybe I hadn't been talking about my achievements enough in my blog and just more focusing on the challenges I've been experiencing because I'm on the road of tests and trials and that's what I've been uh, talking about. So I just want you to all to know that I am absolutely on track with my book and um, it's pretty exciting to see it all coming along. Um, it's interesting because when I was a child, when I was about seven or eight years old, my dad told me this, this kind of metaphor and it relates to this thing about worrying about what people think because, you know, I think the main reason why people don't get started and do their passion and purpose is one is they don't know whether it'll work or not, but two, they're worried about what people will think and particularly if they fail, what will people think? Um, but in the end, you know, art critics really haven't contributed much to our earth, but art certainly has, you know, like changes of art have changed the whole way people think. Um, but really, an art critic is not really contributing anything to the world. And so I think it's sad if, if the critics in our lives or the critics in the world stop people from contributing their unique passion and purpose or their unique pieces of creativity to the world. You know, that doesn't bring the world forward. Um, what does bring the world forward is when people just go for it and are themselves and, and see, you know, some people are going to like it and some people aren't and different people are going to like different things. So I don't know if you can see this picture here. It's a pre-Raphaelite painting and the pre-Raphaelite painters were so vilified when they first brought out their work. And of course, they've become one of the most influential art movements, um, you know, that we've had in uh, in in art, the history of art so it's amazing and here's, here's this guy doing his best to ignore these naughty fairies um, 
who are in his face so that he can keep taking his steps forward. So I really love that, that picture there. Um, and that's what I tend to think of critics as just kind of like naughty fairies. <laughs> no, just want to get them out of the way. So yeah, anyway, this is a story my dad told me when I was about seven um, or eight. And he said that once upon a time there was um, a man, a father and his little girl and they were on their way to the market and they had a donkey with them. And first of all, the little girl was riding the donkey and the father was, was walking beside the donkey's head. And they walked past some people and the people said, what's that little girl doing on the donkey whilst her father walks? You know, she, shouldn't, she should be walking and let her elders be respectful, let her elders ride. And so, you know, they go past and so then the little girl gets off the donkey, <laughs> really worried about what people think, and the father gets on the donkey. And then they pass some more people. And these people say, what's that man doing on the donkey where his poor little girl has to walk beside the donkey? Gosh, you know, he should get off that donkey and let the little girl on. So they walk past them and the father gets off the donkey and they think, oh, what can we do? If the little girl goes on the donkey, they're going to criticize. If I get on the donkey, they're going to criticize. And so they both are just off the donkey and they're just walking beside the donkey and they pass some more people and these people say, what are those people doing? They've got a perfectly good donkey and nobody's riding it. Like, what's the matter with them? So they walk past and then they think, oh, well, what are we going to do now? So then they both hop on the donkey and they pass some people and these people go, oh, poor donkey, got two people riding it. How's that donkey going to cope? And um, <laughs> I remember my dad looking at me and going, so what do you think? And I thought, well... Yeah, you just can't please everybody. They should just do what they want. And it was an amazing realization for me at such a young age. And I'm so happy that my dad was a storyteller because obviously I can remember that story so many years later, 41 years later, I can remember that story. Um, whereas if he'd said to me, don't worry about what people think, I probably wouldn't have remembered it. So anyway, that's my blog for today. Um, today I've been looking at, um, in my, my story, my book on archetypes, I've just been looking at how I'm introducing each one of the archetypes and keywords and sub-archetypes. Um, and that's been pretty easy work today. Uh, but I still got my 2,000 words in, so pretty pleased with that. Okay, I'll speak with you soon. Bye, have fun creating and contributing. Bye.